y'all know that he's my joy. The songwriter said, he is my joy. Like a river of healing water springing up in my soul. Songwriter said, joy unspeakable. How many of you all have that joy? That unspeakable kind? The kind that you just can't explain? Joy. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, as we so humbly approach your holy throne of grace, Father, thanking you and praising you for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for all that you have plans to do. Father, you are the great I am, and beside thee there is none other. We thank you, O oh God, for your blessings, great and small. We thank you, O oh God, for being better to us than we have been to our own selves. We thank you, God, for your only begotten son, Jesus. We thank you for the willingness of mind that he had to suffer one day on Calvary. We thank you, O oh God, for the late elder and sister Lightfoot Solomon Mishaw. We thank you, O oh God, for their preachings and their teachings. We thank you, O oh God, for our present leadership, Elder Howard. We thank you for the ministers of the gospel, the deacons. We thank you for the saints of the Most High. We thank you, O oh God, for the visitors that come out from time to time, O oh God. Father, our prayers that everyone that is present might have an ear to hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Remember, O oh God, your word as it goes forth, that it might go from breast to breast that it might go from heart to heart, that it might go from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast, O oh God, to this end, that you might be the one that gets all of the glory, that you, O oh God, might be the one that gets all of the honor, and that you might be the one that gets all of the praise in our lives. Father, this is our desire, this is our prayer at this hour, and we will be very careful not to forget to give thy name and praise. Amen. And we say unto you all, good afternoon, and may God bless you all. Thank God truly for this day that God has so graciously, that God has so graciously, that God has so graciously allowed our eyes to see. You see, I emphasize that word graciously because today was not promised to any of us, but God saw fit to allow us to be here today. Many of us could have been cut off on the way here. Many of us could have not woken up from our sleep last night. Many of us, and instead of having a, just a purse being robbed, could have had something more tragic happen. But God saw fit to allow us to be here today. Because of his grace and his mercy, we stand here today. And we thank God for that. We thank God for his only begotten son, Jesus, whom he sent down to die the death. And then after that, he rose again. We thank God for the life that he lived while on this land and the example that Jesus Christ was unto us. We thank God truly for the late elder and sister Lightfoot Solomon Mishaw. We thank God for their preachings and their teachings. Thank God for the willingness of mind that they had to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank God truly for our present leadership out of Howard. We thank God for the First Lady, for the ministers of the gospel, the deacons of the church, for the <laughs> saints of the Most High, and our returning uh, visitors and friends. We say unto you all, good afternoon, and may God bless you all. Thank God truly for the wife that he's blessed me with and our children. Thank God for the house he's blessed us with. Transportation back and forth to the different jobs. Truly, as the sister had summed it up, she said, he that is mighty hath done to me great things. 
and holy is his name. We thank God truly for the sparks from the anvil, which is found this afternoon on page number three. Thank God for this another season of thanksgiving. Thank God for Jesus Christ being the reason for this season and for every season. Surely if there ever was a time, it's right now to thank God for all that he has done for us, and we thank God truly for that. Sparks from the anvil. Number one says, God's favor rests upon the faithful. You find that if you are faithful to God, he will be faithful to you. You often hear me say in introduction service that when you take time out for God, God will then take time out for you. But don't expect God to take time out for you if you're not willing to take time out for God. Number two says, don't lose faith in God. He still lives, though great men die. So just because these mighty and these great men may pass off the scene, God forever lives, and he is forevermore. We thank God truly for that. Number three says, if you go down, go down with faith and you will get up with victory. So if you do have to go down, make sure you have a little bit of faith, and that faith will lift you back up. We know the scripture says that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell that mountain to get up and move, and it will be gone. Number four says faith will lift the load. So very true. What you... Your strength, your physical strength may not be able to allow you to do. Faith will give you what you need to support, will supply your needs so that it can be done. Faith in God will give you that understanding. Like I was an individual, my next door neighbor came over the house the other day and had a weight set that was inside of the house collecting dust or in the garage and that I got, it was my brother's, and it was just sitting in the garage for the past couple of years. <laughs> Came into the garage and we were chatting. He said, man, I always wanted one of those. I said, well, I'll tell you what, if you can get it out of here, you can have it. I said, but I don't know how you're gonna get it out. It took a couple of us to put it inside there. He said, well, I'll tell you what, I got me an old faithful. It's called one of those little red wagons. The ones that little kids used to carry around. He went and we got that thing on that little red wagon and he wheeled it right next door on that little red wagon. He said, man, this thing is probably older than me and you combined, but it's still getting it. So when you have faith, it will lift the load. Amen. On the reverse side of the program, it says, when America was established years ago, the founders did so based on the, promise, the promises of God. And because God was included in the Constitution of America, it became a blessed nation. Now let us, as a nation, forget not God. For the people and nation who does so will be turned into hell. The faith of our fathers must continue to live. Amen. So very true. Excuse me. So don't lose faith in God. As I said, don't forget God. It said, for the people and nation who does so will be turned into hell. And none of us want to be turned into hell. So let us always be mindful of God. Like we were saying in the Sunday school lesson today, like the little kids wear that bracelet that says, what would Jesus do? Be mindful of that. Before you go about doing something, ask the question, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus do it this way? Would Jesus do it that way? And whatever way you feel as though Jesus would do it, then that's the way that you do it. But if you feel as though Jesus would not do it that way, then don't you do it that way. Amen. Thank God truly for all of his many, many blessings, great and small. Thank God for those sparks from the anvil, little nuggets that you can take back home with you, that you can meditate on throughout the week, give you something to think about. Because as you often hear us say, an idle mind is the workshop of the devil. If you don't have anything going on in your mind that's spiritual, the devil will give you something to think about that is 